So one day you go to preheat your gas oven and you come back 10 minutes later and it's not preheated at all. Um, there's a few things you can check. The most basic thing, make sure no one's turned off the gas valve. Um, another thing would be make sure none of the gas ports are clogged underneath there's where the gas and the flame comes out. There's little ports, make sure those aren't clogged. Another thing could be the temperature sensor, but 90% of the time it is this part right here. And this is your igniter. This is the thing that heats up glows orange and when it gets hot enough it allows the gas to come in and it lights it on fire. Now these will slowly go bad over time so it won't just suddenly happen and not happen again. Like with ours I tried it a few days later and it actually worked. The problem was it took five or eight minutes before this actually lit the flame. So it's, it's on its way out. So this is what I'm going to replace. Now the official way you can check it is with a voltmeter or a multimeter. You can connect one end on the end of the wires, make through your switch, and you should be getting 3.2 to 3.6 amps. Um, but we're pretty sure, since it's not heating up and it started to die, that this is the culprit. So step one is turn off electricity to your oven, which is what I did down at the circuit breaker. Step two is to turn off the gas. I went underneath and I shut the gas valve. Then you have to take out the trays. Then you have to take out this plate on the bottom. There's two tabs on the back that you have to lift out. Then there's two little bolts and you take out this heat shield and then you'll be able to see down and you'll be able to see where the gas comes out and you'll be able to see this igniter. So let me show you what's next. It finally lit. It, it... Uh, it, uh, I could hear a tick and the gas came on and it lit on fire. You can see it's just starting to heat up. And it's actually heating up a lot faster than it was the other day. It's already past that. So it seems to be working better now than it was. So like I said, after you remove the grates and the cover, you'll have this heat shield and you want to lift it away, but first you're going to have to take two of these bolts out and you can use a quarter inch socket to take these out. Next, the tricky part is getting to the access wires for your igniter. Now the igniter, again, is held in with two of these screws, the same size. And to get to the wires, I had to pull them out, but I also had to remove a lot of bolts from around this plate to be able to move the gas port out of the way and move this plate out of the way. And there's insulation back here guarding wires in the back, and I had to pull it out just to get to these wire, wire nuts. If you have a movable oven, you might be able to move the oven out and pull off the back plate to get to those wires. But I had to remove all of this because my oven set in the wall. Again, they were just several of these little bolts. But I had to remove a whole bunch of them just to get to the wires. Now here's the new igniter with the mounting plate and I'm going to attach it and set it in place with this one. But first I have to remove the old igniter and undo the wire ties. And that's the old igniter removed with the wire ties. Now in the kit I bought from Amazon, it came with instructions and new wire ties, but it didn't come with the bolt I need to secure the mounting plate to the igniter. So I'm going to remove the bolt off the old mounting plate. It's the same size, quarter inch. Now I'll use that the new plate to the igniter. Now I noticed that on the new wire there's a, a stripped end and there's a fitting on one. And on the old igniter they're both just stripped wire. So I'm going to have to cut this and strip this wire bare so it can screw in to the wire tie. Okay, we are now at the halfway point. Um, I need to feed this through and attach the wire ties. And just reverse everything up to this point. Also, I don't think it matters um, which end 
you put the, the wires to because it's just completing the circuit. I don't think there's a positive and a negative per se. Okay, everything is put back. All the bolts are put back in place and this is secured back. We have the two bolts holding the igniter in and the wires pushed back safely out of the way. So we're ready to turn the gas and electric on and test it out. Okay, time to test it out. Bake, start, it's at 100 degrees. Let's see if it heats up. There it goes. That's a good sign. It's starting to glow. There we go. That was much, much faster than before. Hit cancel, turn it off. And the flames turn off. So it worked. Well, it looks like that worked. Um, that time with the new igniter, it started glowing right away and the flames turned on and lit in less than 30 seconds as opposed to five or 10 minutes when it did work or not at all when we were waiting for an hour when it didn't work. So it was the igniter. It wasn't that hard to fix. Maybe took about an hour. Um, the biggest problem was removing all the bolts and getting to the wires. But uh, hopefully that works and it lasts for another 10 years. So thanks. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing. And on this side, you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog, which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.